ओमतिरंध से ज्ञानाजनाशलाकया चक्षुर्मीत तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतनोष्ठ स्थापित ये नूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मह्यम ददा स्वदाक वंदेह श्रीगुर श्रीयुतापदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांश श्रीरूपं सागरजाता सह गणा रघुनाथान्वित तम सजीव साइत सवदूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्य दीराधा कृष्ण पदा सह गणा ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता नमा ओं विष्णुपादाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नितिनामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देशतारिणे वाचाकूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाने गौरातिशे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांतराधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचना गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य <coughs> प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सुधिया डिवोटिस इट्स ए सेट ऑफ प्रोफेशनल ऑडियो इन ऑडियो सेटिंग्स आई थिंक इट्स जस्ट अपअप so dear devotees we are uh, observing a very auspicious tithi today it is uh, shri rukmini dwadashi it is the appearance day of uh, shrimati rukmini devi who is um, an expansion of shrimati radharani shrimati radharani appears in the dwarka leela as rukmini devi as followers of shila rupa goswami who is rupa manjari in the spiritual world we are primarily <clears throat> worshipers of um, shri vrindavan dham aradhyo bhagwan vraje shatanay stad dham vrindavanam ramya kaaje dupasana vrajavadhu वर्गेण कल्पित श्रीमद्भागवत प्रमाण ममल प्रेम कुमर्त महां श्रीचैतन्य महाप्रभोर्मत त्रादरा विश्वनाथ चक्रवर्ती ठाकुर राइट्स दैट आराध्य भगवान व्रजेश तनय द सुप्रीमली वर्षिबल डीटी इज व्रजेश तनय व्रजेन्द्र नंदन कृष्ण नंदन नंदन कृष्ण श्याम सुंदर is the supremely worshipable deity for all of us aradhya bhagwan rajesh tanayas now in which dham should we worship him should we worship him in vrindavan dham or dwarka puri dham or um, 
Hastinapur, Mathura. What is the meditation for us? Which dham? Leelas of which dham? It is Tadhama Vrindavan. We are worshippers of Vraj Leela. Vraj Bhakti is what we all aspire for. Tadhama Vrindavan. Ramya Kajit Upasana Rajavati. And what is the best Upasana? What is the best method of worship? It is following in the footsteps of the Vraja Gopis, headed by Srimati Radharani. That is what Mahaprabhu came to give. Gopi Bhav. Vraj Bhakti. Not just Gopi Bhav. There is Sakya Bhav. Also, there is Vatsalya Prem also. There is Dasya Bhav also. But in Vrindavan, that is our focus. However, based on the writings of Srila Rupa Goswami, Lalita Madhav, Vidanta Madhav, and teachings of our Acharyas, and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself, we understand that Srimati Rukmini Devi is non-different from Srimati Radharani. Radharani expands into many kantas, many vibes of Krishna. Govinda Mohini Radha Govinda Nandini Govinda Sarva Sva Sarva Kanta Shiroma Srila Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami writes in Sri Chaitanya Charita Amrit that Srimati Radharani is Sarva Kanta Shiromani. She is the crest jewel. She is the um, fountain head of all the consorts of Krishna. There is Srimati Sita Devi, who is the consort of Lord Ramachandra. There is Rukmini Devi, the consort of Lord Krishna in Dwarka, Dwarkadhish Krishna. But the origin of all these Lakshmi Murtis, even the Lakshmi Devis present in the different spiritual planets in Vaikuntha, they are all coming from Srimati Radharani because Srimati Radharani is the original Ladini Shakti of Krishna, the pleasure potency of Krishna. And all the other Lakshmi Murtis like Sita Devi and um, Rukmini Devi, Satyabhama Devi, they are all expansions of Srimati Radharani. Even in Goloka Vrindavan, the chief gopis like Chandravali Gopi, or Lalita Sakhi, Vishaka Sakhi, they are all expansions, or the Ashta Sakhis, they are all expansions of Srimati Radharani. So, we understand that Srimati Radharani herself came as Rukmini Devi. We see even in Chaitanya Bhagwat, one day Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu decided to enact a drama in Srivasanga during the night Kiritans. And um, he decided to play the drama of exactly what we are going to discuss today, Shri Rukmini Mangal, the marriage of Shri Rukmini Devi to Krishna, Lord Krishna from Srimad Bhagavatam. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Haridas Thakur and Srivas Thakur, Advaita Prabhu, all of them, they enacted this beautiful drama of the pastime of Sri Rukmini Devi and Lord Krishna. So this is a very important pastime for all of us. We are all trying to be good devotees. Therefore, we are practicing the process of Krishna consciousness. Anyone who practices the process of Krishna consciousness is called Sadhaka. So who are we? We are sadhakas. We are all sadhakas. So as sadhakas, the pastime of Srimati Rukmini Devi is very, 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 very important to all of us. And why it is so important? We will see now. So Srimati Rukmini Devi, <clears throat> she is the eternal consort of the Supreme Lord in the spiritual world, in the Dwarka Puri Dham. And um, <clears throat> 5,000 years ago, when Krishna appeared in Sri Vrindavan Dham, Srimati Rukmini Devi also appeared later on in Vidarbha, in a place near Nagpur and Varadha. That village is still there. It's called Kaundinyapur today. Um, in those days, it was called Kundinapuri. Almost same name. So it's a place in Vidarbha, near Nagpur, in Maharashtra, India. There was a great king. His name was Maharaj Bhishmaka. And he was a very pious and very religious and saintly king, Bhishmak Maharaj. That is why he had such nice uh, daughter, divine daughter as Srimati Rukmini Devi. 
and he had five sons headed by rukmi rukmi was the eldest so he had total five sons and he had one daughter and the daughter was the youngest of all and her name was rukmini so when rukmini devi attained a marriageable age bhishma maharaj like any father he decided to get his daughter married in the proper vedic way so he started looking for a suitable um, bride for his daughter rukmini devi she is the eternal goddess of fortune so from childhood she was very divine very very special she was the most beautiful girl she was most effulgent she had lotus eyes she has beautiful black soft hair every limb of her body was exquisitely perfectly beautiful she had a very fair golden complexion she had very beautiful teeth reddish lips very very beautiful rukmini devi but it was not just her physical beauty it was her inner beauty also from her childhood she was very devoted to dharma she had all good qualities all good qualities were there in shri rukmini devi and bhishma maharaj because he was also a devotee every now and then he would invite sadhus like narada muni to come to his kingdom vidarbha to the capital city kondinapuri and he would request them to speak hari katha and rukmini devi was such an abode of good qualities that she would sit and hear from the great souls she would always hear hari katha from the visiting sadhus bhishma maharaj would arrange and rukmini devi rukmini devi would hear attentively because she heard with faith and um, like shila prabhupada says attentive oral reception she received the message of narad muni and other sadhus who visited the, the kingdom of her father because she heard the message nicely in her heart attraction towards lord krishna developed shrunvatam svakatha krishna punya shravana kirtana ridantasto hi abhadrani vidhunoti suritsatam nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavat sevaya bhagavati uttam shloke bhakte bhavati naishthiki fixed devotion develops by hearing shrunvata by hearing hari katha if we hear hari katha from someone who is a devotee of krishna someone who has a pure heart and if we attentively with devotion in a submissive spirit we receive the message in our heart through the medium of our ears our heart becomes purified vidhunoti surit satam it gets cleansed of course shrimati rukmini devi <clears throat> she doesn't have any purification to undergo because she is perfect but rukmini devi is playing the role of a sadhaka few minutes ago we discussed how all of us we are sadhakas we are practicing devotional service this story this past time this leela from shrimad bhagavatam chapter 52 53 and 54 they describe the marriage of rukmini devi to lord krishna rukmini devi represents you and me my dear friends rukmini devi represents a sadhak and just by hearing from the great souls like narada muni shri pad narada muni rukmini devi gave her heart to krishna even as a young girl because the sadhus would come and they would tell the past times of lord krishna to bhishma maharaj that krishna has appeared in vrindavan maharaj bhishma do you know he has appeared in vrindavan in gokul in the house of nanda baba and yashoda mai and the great sage 
Gargamuni, he has made a prediction that this Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. He is not different from Lord Narayan. Krishna has killed Putana. Krishna has killed Agasur. But Krishna is so merciful that even though Put Putana tried to poison him, he made her his mother eternally in Goloka Vrindavan. He is so merciful. Aho bakiyam stana kala puta. Krishna is so wonderful. He steals the butter from the homes of the gopis. He, is very, he was very naughty as a child. He would play all sorts of pranks on the Brajvasis. He subdued Kaliya. He performed Ras Leela with the gopis. So all these pastimes were narrated by Narad Muni and other sadhus to Bhishwak Maharaj in his court. And Rukmini Devi was, she grew up hearing all these stories of Krishna. And she immediately gave her heart to Krishna. And she made up her mind that I will only marry Shri Krishna. He is my pranamath. I cannot offer myself to anyone else. This body, my love, my heart, my mind, my intelligence, everything belongs to Krishna. She made up her mind. And she had her intimate friends in the palace, Sakhis. She confided to the Sakhis that I am in love with Krishna. I want to marry Krishna. In the meantime, the elder brother of Rukmini, whose name is Rukmi, he showed a lot of enthusiasm to get his younger sister married. So Bhishma Maharaj was making preparations for the marriage of Rukmini Devi. And Bhishma Maharaj, he came to the conclusion also that my daughter must marry Lord Krishna. Shri Krishna is the most ideal match for my beautiful daughter. So he was going to approach Lord Krishna in Dwarka if he would accept Rukmini Devi as his bride. But Rukmi, the eldest son of Maharaj Bhishma, he came up to Bhishma Maharaj and said, My dear father, I am old enough now to take responsibility for my sister. After all, I am going to become the next king. So please leave the marriage of my younger sister Rukmini to me. I will find a suitable match for her and I will get her married. Now you just relax. I will take care of everything. He showed a lot of enthusiasm. And Bhishma Maharaj, out of his affection, he gave in. He said, all right, you take over the marriage plans and preparation. So Bhishma Maharaj was not happy when Rukmi suggested that we will get Rukmini married to my dear friend Shishupal, Chedi Naresh, the king of the Chedi dynasty. Bhishma Maharaj said that, no, 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 I think Krishna is a much better choice than Shishupal. But Rukmi made it a, a prestige issue. He said, no, Shishupal is my dear friend. Shishupal has all good qualities. He's very capable and I have given him my word. Father, please don't prove my word to be false. I have given my word to my friend. Please, let's get Rukmini married to Shishupal. Out of affection for his eldest son, Maharaj Bhishmak gave in. Hare Krishna. He agreed to get Rukmini Devi married to Shishupal instead of Krishna. Now, who is Rukmi and who is Bhishma? Hare Krishna. This is a um, very important consideration for all of us. <clears throat> Rukmi represents uncontrolled mind. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that the uncontrolled mind is the greatest enemy and a controlled mind is our best friend. But at, at present, because we are conditioned souls, there is so much nonsense in our mind. And we have had so many samskaras. We have done so many wrong things in the past. And the impressions are there in the mind. All of us have a past. All of us have a past. It is said that every saint has a past. Hare Krishna. Someone may appear with a nice tilak and kanthimala 
nice kurta but everyone has a past i have i don't know about all of you but i do so every saint has a past and every sinner has a future hare krishna every sinner has a future which means every sinner will suffer in the future and when you see a saint don't think that the saint has just dropped from heaven no that saint has become a saint through bhajan through tapasya tapo divyam so every saint has a past both ways we can understand every saint has a past means every saint was once a sinner and every saint has a past also means that even though you may have been a sinner if you do bhajan you can become a sadhu you can become a saint so that is the meaning of every saint has a past and what is the meaning of every sinner has a future if we are sinning today every sinner has a future means we will have to suffer for little sense gratification we commit sins and then we have to suffer in the future terribly for our sins so if we are sinning the statement every sinner has a future gives us a warning stop stop your sins otherwise you will suffer but the other way to look at it is even if we are a sinner every sinner has a future means even if we are a sinner if we do bhajan if we do hari bhajan we still have a bright future even though we may have been sinners even though we are sinners if we make a resolution today on rukmini dwadashi auspicious tithi that now i will not commit sins i will not break the regulative principles i will not commit aparad then although we are sinners we have a future we can become sadhus by doing bhajan by following the path of krishna consciousness so <clears throat> our mind is our enemy because it has got lot of bad conditionings lot of negative conditionings bad samskaras so for so many lifetimes we have committed so many sins actually one mahatma was saying that today we may be sitting as devotees but in the past because we have had so many millions of lifetimes we have committed all sins we have eaten meat some of us have eaten meat even in this lifetime we have been murderers we have been decoits all of us have um, we probably were butchers we have gone through everything therefore the vedic injunction is o apavitra pavitro va sarvavastha gatopi va yah smare pundari kaksha sabhaya vantara suchi shri vishnu shri vishnu shri vishnu om apavitra pavitro whether you are apavitra whether you are contaminated or you are pure pavitra om apavitra pavitro va sarva avastha gato piva you may have gone through all avastha all situations of life which means we may have committed all sorts of sins yah smare pundari kaksha but if we remember our lotus side shri chaitanya mahaprabhu if we remember lotus side krishna then sa bhaya from outside antara from inside shuchi we become purified from within and without we become purified just by remembering krishna just by remembering shriman mahaprabhu such is the power of krishna so mind is envious of krishna mind wants to rebel against krishna mind has independent selfish plans my dear friends our uncontrolled mind represents rukmini the brother the elder brother of rukmini rukmini represents the sadhak the sadhak wants to marry krishna the sadhak wants to go to krishna but what does rukmi who is the uncontrolled mind what does he do no rukmi says no and rukmi makes plans to surrender to someone else and who is that someone else it is shishupal and who is shishupal shishupal represents envy of krishna envy of krishna we are in this material world because we are envious of krishna because we want fame we want wealth we want to be beautiful we want to be popular but all popularity all fame all wealth all beauty 
all knowledge, all strength belongs to Krishna. These are the opulences of Krishna. We don't own anything, but because we want to have some wealth, we want to have some beauty, some glory, we are envious of Krishna. Because all glory belongs to Krishna. Because we want some of it, we, are, we become envious of Krishna. And because of this envy, we are in the material world. So, Shishupal represents envy towards Krishna and the mind, uncontrolled mind, Rukmi has made a friendship, a pact of friendship with Shishupal, who, is, who represents envy towards Krishna. And then Bhishmak, Maharaj Bhishmak represents our intelligence. Intelligence is supposed to take us to Krishna. Therefore, Bhishmak initially made plans on his own that I will get my daughter Rukmini married to Krishna. But then what happens? Who is polluted? The intelligence, who has polluted the intelligence of Bhishmak? It is the uncontrolled mind. It is the uncontrolled mind, Rukmi. Rukmi comes and tells the mind, tells the intelligence of Bhishma. No, no, no. I am your eldest son. You must support me. I will take responsibility. Don't worry. I want to get my sister married. And what he does? All nonsense. He says, no marriage with Krishna. Let him, let my sister get married to Shishupal. So that is what our um, happens to our intelligence, Bhishma. We get controlled by the crazy mind. Therefore, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, the intelligence is superior to the mind. Now, Bhishmak and Rukmi. Who is superior? Bhishmak. He is the father. He is the king. Rukmi is just the son. Rukmi is supposed to listen to the father. But what is happening? The father is getting influenced by the evil son. Bhishmak Maharaj is getting influenced by the wicked Rukmi. Which means the intelligence gets bewildered by the uncontrolled mind. So we have to be very careful. Who should we listen to? We should listen to Guru, Sadhu and Shastra. The visiting sadhus like Narada Muni who would come and speak Harikatha in the palace of Maharaj Bhishmak represent our spiritual masters. Our Guru Gana. Our Guru Varga is represented by Narad Muni and other sadhus who came to the palace of Maharaj Bhishmak to speak Harikatha. So Bhishmak Maharaj should listen to who? To the sadhus. To the Acharya Varga. To, he should listen to Acharya Vani. Instead, he listened to the uncontrolled mind. Rukmi. Out of affection. <laughs> Mera man, my mind. No, we are not the mind. We are the soul. We are Rukmini. We are sadhak. And we want to go to Krishna. So then, all arrangements were made for getting Rukmini married to Shishupal. And naturally, Shishupal was very, very happy. Why? Because Shishupal is an incarnation of Ravan and Hiranyakashipu. Hiranyakashipu is coming very soon. <laughs> On Narsimha Chaturdashi, both of them will appear. Lord Narsimha Dev will also appear and Hiranyakashipu will also appear. But the difference is Lord Narsimha Dev will stay with us and Hiranyakashipu will be celebrating his disappearance day <laughs> on Narsimha Chaturdashi. Hmm? So this Hiranyakashipu came as Shishupa. He came as Ravan. As Ravan, who did Ravan want to marry? Ravan had the most beautiful wives headed by Mandodari. Ravan had also kidnapped the daughters of many demigods. He had kidnapped the daughters of many rishis. Very beautiful. Uh, Brahm, Brahmin girls and he had married them. He had thousands of wives in his palace. But who did Ravan want to marry? He wanted to marry Sita Devi. Hare Krishna. Ravan wanted to marry Srimati Sita Devi. But was Ravan able to marry Srimati Sita Devi? No. To marry Srimati Sita Devi, what sacrifices did Ravan do? He lost his sons. Like Akshay Kumar, Indrajit. He lost his brother like Kumbhakaran. He lost the association of a good brother like Vibhishan. His sister lost her nose and ears. He lost his entire army. He lost his entire kingdom. And he even lost his own life. Ravan sacrificed his family, his wealth, his kingdom, his soldiers, his army and his own life just to marry 
Sita Devi. But Sita Devi was already married to Lord Ramachandra. She wanted to have nothing to do with Ravan. Now that same Sita has appeared as Rukmini Devi and that same Ravan has appeared as Shishupal and they are about to get married. This time there is no opposition. Even the father of Sita Devi, who is Rukmini, Maharaj Bhishma has agreed to the marriage. And Sita's own brother wants her to marry Ravan. Rukmini's own brother Rukmi wants Rukmini to marry Shishupal, who is Ravan. So now you can imagine how elated, how delighted, how blissful, how ecstatic Shishupal is feeling. Yes, yes. I am going to marry Rukmini. She is Miss Universe. She is, she is better than millions of Miss Universes. Here we say Miss Universe, but we don't have any idea what is universe. Have you seen the Apsara? Have you seen Urvashi? <laughs> they will become mad if they see. We will become mad if we see. Because we are conditioned souls. But they say Miss Universe. But Srimati Rukmini Devi was Miss Vaikuntha. <laughs> Miss Rukmini Devi is Miss Vaikuntha and Shishupal is all set to marry her. The marriage is fixed. The muhurta is fixed. The invitation letters have gone. All the preparations have begun in Vidarbha. Big, big um, uh, homes have been built for all, receiving all the guests. And what does Shishupal do? Shishupal invites his best friends to accompany him for the marriage. Who are Shishupal's best friend? His brother, Dantavakra, who is Hiranyaksha and Kumbhakarana reincarnated. So Dantavakra is there with his army. There is Shalva demon with his army. There is Jarasan with his army. And there is the fake duplicate Vasudev, Poundrak. <laughs> the, the crazy guy who used to pretend to be the real Vasudev. He stuck to arms, <laughs> artificial arms. I am four-arm Vasudev. That Pondrak was there. So Shishupal, Dantavatra, Jarasan, Shalva, and Pondrak. These perverted reflection of the Panchatattva. <laughs> the opposite of Panchatattva appeared. And they came with all their armies. And because they came with many, many Akshavanis of armies, Maharaj Bhishmak had to really stretch himself to make arrangements for all of them. But he made he built special quarters for all of them and made arrangements, gave gifts. The entire city of Kondinapuri was completely washed, not with just water, but water mixed with sandalwood, sandalwood paste. So it was fragrant. So the entire city of Kondinapuri was fragrant. There were beautiful flowers and mango leaf decorations at the doors of all the homes. Our Ishwari Radha Mataji has mango trees in her home. So these mango leaves are considered to be very auspicious. So banana leaves, mango leaves in our Vedic culture, coconuts, they are all considered to be very auspicious items. So all the homes were decorated with auspicious items. Everyone was uh, very well decorated with jewelry and sandalwood paste and flower garlands. And there was a festive atmosphere. And Bhishma Maharaj was giving out so many valuable, gift, valuable gifts to everyone. The Brahmins were reciting various auspicious Vedic mantras to invoke auspiciousness. And the preparations were made. And in three days, Srimati Rukmini Devi was arranged to get married to Shishupal. She did not want to marry him. But she had no choice. She was being forced in a way. So she was very upset. She was crying. But what to do? But what should a sadhak do when all the odds are against us? When we feel down, when we feel I cannot make it in Krishna consciousness. It's too much. The anarthas, like envy, lust. So uh, Rukmi represents envy towards Krishna. Shishupal also represents envy to, towards Krishna. Sorry. Rukmi represents the mind who is completely uh, uncontrolled. Shishupal represents envy. And who do Jarasan and Poundrak and Shalva and Dantavakra represent? They represent the other Anarthas. 
like anger, lust, greed. So what happens when our anarthas completely overwhelm us? What happens when Rukmini is completely overwhelmed? When Rukmini is completely overwhelmed by Rukmi and Jarasan and Dantavakra and Shishupal, what should a sadhak do? Rukmini represents a sadhak. What should we do when we feel completely down and out? Should we give up? Should we listen to the mind? The mind will say, just take the easy way, easy way out. Just take a bottle of wine and just drown all your problems. Or just sit on your sofa, pick up the remote control and just watch TV, watch some show. Just forget all this negativity. Just take your mind away from it. Some people, they go to meditation, hypnosis, to forget the reality. Hare Krishna. Or let's just entertain our mind by reading some novel. What does a novel do? It's complete fiction. You're just wasting, they're just wasting our time. Reading to someone else's imagination. Some author has written a novel, some fiction. And millions of people are completely engrossed in the fictitious imagination of one author. Hare Krishna. With all due respect. Someone may write any novel for that matter. Whether it is Harry Potter or anything. I don't know the names, but so many. They are all fictions. They are not adding any value to us. They are just meant for entertaining. But where is the time for entertainment, my dear friends? We have so much to do in spiritual life. So many Harikathas to hear. So much to chant. So much to read. Such beautiful books are there. Such uh, We want to do deity worship for our beautiful deities. So many things are there. And we want to preach. We want to distribute books. We want to do Nam Sankirtan with devotees. So we are very busy. We don't have any time for entertainment. <clears throat> so in this way, um, <clears throat> what should a devotee do? A devotee, a sadhak, should not take shelter of these feel-good, easy way outs. Never. Rukmini, taking the role of a sadhak, is teaching us. What did Rukmini do? She took a piece of paper. She took a pen. And she wrote the first love letter. Hare Krishna. <laughs> the first love letter she wrote. And in that letter, it was an outpouring of her emotions, spiritual emotions, her pure love. In Chaitanya Charitamrit, Srila Kaviraj Goswami says, that there are two things. There is love and there is lust. Love is spiritual and lust is material. Indriya tripti, sense gratification, is lust. And Krishner Indriya tripti, to have a desire to satisfy the senses of Rishikesh, satisfy the senses of Krishna, that is praying. So when we want to give pleasure to Krishna, that is love. When we want to give pleasure to our senses selfishly, that is lust. So when we look at someone and we say, as soon as I saw you, love at first sight. It is not love. Because by seeing that person, we got pleasure for our senses. That is lust. It is lust at first sight, not love. It is not love story. It is lust story. It is not love letter in this material world. It is lust letter. Or at the most affection. Affection marriage, affection letter. Not love marriage. Because love is only for Radha and Krishna. Love is bhakti. <clears throat> Prema bhakti. So Rukmini Devi, she wrote a very beautiful letter to Lord Krishna. And let us see what Rukmini Devi writes. So that brings us to verse number 37. If I make uh, Sharan Prabhu, my screen sharing is not working. You are the co-host. Is it possible for you to share Vedabhyas? Screen share Vedabhyas so everybody can see the verse. So Srimad Bhagavatam 10.52.37 10.52.37 So Rukmini Devi has written this letter. And who does Rukmini Devi give this letter to because Rukmini Devi is near Nagpur in Vidarbha, Kondinapuri. 
And where is Krishna? Govinda Dwaraka Vasi. Govinda, Lord Krishna is living in Dwaraka. It is many, many uh, kilometers away. So what did Rukmini do? She gave the letter to a Brahman. She gave the letter to a very reliable Brahman. So letter represents our heartfelt prayers. I repeat, the letter that Rukmini Devi wrote to Krishna represents our heartfelt desires, spiritual desires, our prayer. And the Brahman who carried this letter very reliably from Vidharva to Dwarka represents our bhajan, our chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Nam Sankirtan, hearing Harikatha, reading the scriptures, Swadhyay, Kirtan, Shravan, all these devotional activities that we do, our sadhana, our spiritual practices, they are the Brahman who carried the love letter of Rukmini Devi to Lord Krishna. Rukmini Devi had pure love, has pure love for Krishna. Because her only desire is to satisfy Krishna, to offer herself to Krishna for Krishna's pleasure. That is love. No selfish interest. So, Srimad Bhagavatam 10.52.37 Vedavis. So, Rukmini Devi sent her letter to Krishna. Thank you so much, Charantam. Thank you so much. So, we can read Sanskrit also for this. Can go up a little bit. So, verse number 37. Shri Rukmini Uvacha Shrutva Gunan Bhuvana Sundara Shran Vitamte Nirvishya Karna Vivarae Haratonga Tapam Rupam Drisham Drishimatam Akilartha Labam such a beautiful verse. A translation by the humble disciples of our founder Acharya. Om Vishnu Pada Paramhamsa Parivraja Kacharya Shtot Tarashata Shri Shrimad Abhay Charanaravinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Shila Prabhupada. Translation Shri Rukmini said in her letter as read by the Brahman. So the Brahman went with the letter of Rukmini. Immediately he went to Dwarka. Now we heard it is hundreds of kilometers, my dear friends, it's hundreds of miles from Kondinapuri to Dwarka. And Dwarka was not on the beach in Gujarat. Dwarka was in the middle of the ocean. How without any horse, how without any chariot, without being trained, he was, the Brahman was not some marathon runner. Rukmini Devi did not find some marathon runner to take. No, she found a reliable Brahman who had all the Brahminical qualities and sent the letter with him. And overnight, this Brahman reached Dwarka miraculously. Who gave the strength to the Brahman to walk? from Kondinapuri near Nagpur all the way in the middle of the ocean. Dwarka. Who gave the strength? This strength, my dear friends, now remember, the letter of Rukmini to Krishna represents our innermost heartfelt prayers. And the Brahman who carried this letter represents our bhajanakriya, our sadhana, our spiritual practices. Now what gives the strength to our spiritual practices to reach Krishna. Because the Brahman reached Krishna overnight. So who gives the strength to our bhajan to reach Krishna? This strength, this bala is given by bala Ram. Lord bala Ram, the Adi Guru. Adi Guru Tattva. He gives the strength or the, he gave the strength to the Brahman to walk overnight from Vidarbha to Dwarka. So the strength to our spiritual practices is given by Balaram. Therefore, we must pray to Lord Balaram. We must pray to Lord Nityananda Ram. Without them, we have no qualification. We have no strength. Bala means spiritual strength. So Balaramji gave the strength. 
this brahman reached and this brahman was not stopped by any gatekeepers or any guards he was allowed straight entrance to krishna what does it mean our bhajan kriya the path of pure krishna consciousness as taught to us by shrila prabhupada has no hindrance has no hindrance it can go straight to krishna therefore pure devotional service is called krishna akarshini by shri rupa goswami in bhakti rasamrit sindhu one of the qualities of pure devotional service is it attracts krishna it attracts krishna therefore this brahman was not stopped he got straight access to krishna lord krishna welcomed him and with great respect received him gave him prasad to eat gave him a place to get fresh and rest and then lord krishna came and started massaging the feet of this brahman just see krishna's magnanimity and then krishna asked the brahman what brings you here is everyone all right in your kingdom are you able to practice your brahmanical duties properly without any hindrance in your kingdom is the king giving you protection i feel very happy when the king gives protection to the citizens to practice krishna consciousness and i feel very happy when a brahman like you is self satisfied lord krishna tells that it is very essential to have santosh or satisfaction in life krishna says i do not like people who are always dissatisfied whatever happens in our life whatever situation we are put in good or bad it is because of our karma उट hare krishna therefore when bad things happen to us we must understand this philosophy atmakritam vipakam from shrimad bhagavatam 10th canto lord brahma ji says this prayer tat tenu kampam susamikshamano gunjana eva atmakritam vipakam gunjana eva atmakritam gunjana means to tolerate we should tolerate all the vipak all the sufferings that come knowing that they are atmakrita i have only created them. i have created this karma what to do urdhvam gachanti satvastha madhye tishtanti rajasa and adho gachanti tamas in bhagavad gita lord krishna says if we perform good activities good things will happen we'll go up if we perform activities in the mode of passion rajasic activities we will stay in this material world success and failure and if we perform sinful activities tamasic activities in the mode of ignorance we will glide down to the hellish planets urdhvam gachanti satvastha madhye deshtanti rajasa adho gachanti tamas very clear krishna says in bhagavad gita so we have to understand that whatever happens to us is because of our karma and therefore when we complain it is a pain to krishna krishna says in this chapter to the brahman it gives me pain i don't like it when people complain because krishna has created the system to the external material energy for us so krishna feels very happy when he sees a devotee a brahman who is satisfied whatever happens whether we make 30000 dollars a year or we make 300000 dollars a year or we make 3 million dollars a year we should be satisfied knowing that this is my karma kamandalu the sannyasis they beg in their kamandalu and there is a karma kamandalu everyone has a kamandalu of different sizes some people have big kamandalu in their kamandalu 3 million dollars per year can fit some of us have small kamandalu even if the person who is giving the alms fills our kamandalu but our kamandalu can only hold uh, 30000 dollars a year then that's what we will get and we have to be satisfied yes this is enough this is called karma kamandalu we got according to our credit karmic credits so krishna says that one must be satisfied one must learn the art of satisfaction after saying all this krishna asked the brahman now please tell me my dear brahman what brings you here 
the Brahman says, I have got a letter from Rukmini Devi. And he narrates the whole story. How Rukmini Devi is the abode of all good qualities. And just by hearing about your qualities, she has given her heart to you. She wanted to marry you. But her elder brother, Rukmi, decided against it and has made up his mind to get her married to Shishupal. The marriage is happening two days from now. There is no time. She has written you a letter. Please read this letter. Krishna accepted that letter, opened it, and gave it to the Brahman to read. Because Krishna wanted transparency. The Brahman should not think that, I wonder what the princess has written to Krishna. Because if the Brahman has been so honest that he has faithfully carried overnight the letter to Krishna all the way from Vidarbha, Krishna wanted to maintain transparency. Krishna is teaching us that in our devotee relationship, we should maintain transparency. So Krishna told, Krishna himself could have read the letter, but he told the Brahman, you read the letter. I trust you. So then the Brahman started reading the letter. And that brings us to verse number 37. Rukmini Uvacha. So what is she saying? Oh, beauty of the worlds, having heard of your qualities, which enter the ears of those who hear and remove their bodily distress, and having also heard of your beauty, which fulfills all the visual desires of those who see, I have fixed my shameless mind upon you, O Krishna. So beautiful. So if we go up to the verse, Shrutva gunan bhuvana sundara shrunvitam te. Shrutva gunan bhuvana sundara. So she's addressing Krishna as a bhuvana sundara. Krishna, who is the abode of all beauty. Whatever we may find beautiful in this world, whether it is some young man, young women, we may find attractive or beautiful, whether it is uh, some animal species. I know people who find certain animals very attractive and they spend their entire life studying them. Someone is attracted to the Bengal, Royal Bengal Tiger. Some is attracted to the Siberian Tiger. Some is attracted to the um, African Lions or the Cheetahs or the Grizzly Bears or Bald Eagle or something. They catch snowy owl. They they, take, they find one particular species extremely attractive and they give their whole life to study it. Some may like uh, Kashmir. Oh, it's so beautiful. So one poet, when he came to India, he said, if there is heaven on earth, it is this, it is this, it is this. Agar kahi dharti pe jannat hai, to wo yahi hai, yahi hai, yahi hai. He said about Kashmir. It is the most beautiful place on earth. So someone may like a place, find a place to be very attractive. Someone may like the Grand Canyon or the Niagara Falls. They feel very attracted. They visit again and again. So whatever beauty we find in a person, in an animal, in nature, in a place, anything we find attractive. It is attractive because the artist has made it attractive. And that artist is Krishna. And all beauty, all attractiveness comes from Krishna because Krishna is all attractive. In fact, the name Krishna means Akarashitahi iti Krishna. Krishna is one who is all attractive because he is the abode of all beauty. Therefore, Srimati Rukmini Devi in the first line of this verse is addressing Krishna as Bhuvana Sundara, the abode of all beauty. Bhuvana Sundara. Shrutva Gunan, after hearing your qualities, Rukmini Devi is saying, what happens? Through the karana, when, through the ears, when we hear about you, what happens? We hear about Hari, Haratvanga Tapam. By hearing about Hari, there is Tapa Harana. All our tap, all our distress is destroyed. It is removed. Harataha, Anga Tapa. Whatever pain and suffering, distress is there in our bodies. It is removed simply by hearing about Krishna. And the evidence is His Holiness Bhakti Tiratha Swami Maharaj. His body was riddled with stage 4 melanoma. The cancer had spread from his skin into his liver, lungs and practically all his bones. 
his bones were breaking pathological fractures because of the cancer in them the pain was so deep that even the painkillers being given by the hospice team were not helping much but shri bhakti tirtha swami maharaj his happiness was just to hear hari naam sankirtan and to hear krishna katha especially the vrindavan pastimes and he would keep on hearing keep on hearing and all his distress would go away as he heard krishna katha and krishna naam this is the proof second she says rupam drisham drishimatam akhilartha labham rupam drisham by seeing your roop by seeing your beauty krishna what happens akhilartha labham we feel that akhila artha total fulfillment of our desires we obtain labham we obtain the fulfillment of all our desires just by beholding your beautiful form this is why achuta this is the quality of achut my dear achut my dear krishna you are infallible you never fail to give protection to your devotees and i am your devotee i am asking you for your protection please don't disappoint me please come and take me rukmini is saying we can go to the next verse prabhu verse number 38 श्रीमती रुक्मिणी देवी कंटिन्यूस तात्वा मुकुंद महती कुलशील रूप विद्या वयो द्रविण धाम अभिरात्मतुल्यम धीरा पतिम कुलवती नवृणीत कन्या काले नृसिंह नर लोक मनोभिराम सच ब्यूटिफुल पोएट्री ओ मुकुंद you are equal only to yourself in lineage character beauty knowledge youthfulness wealth and influence on rasimha o lion among men you delight the minds of all mankind manobhiramam what aristocratic sober minded and marriageable girl of a good family would not choose you as her husband when the proper time has come so rukmini devi is saying that krishna may think that why is this girl why is this princess writing this letter to me why does she want to marry me why so rukmini devi is explaining that my dear mukunda my dear krishna which mahati mahati means um aristocratic kula mahati kula which aristocratic girl who is good in character will not be attracted to you because my dear mukunda you have all the qualities what are the qualities shila shila means sushil means good character what is the good character of krishna krishna has krishna is a source of all good character he has got so much shila in him he has got such humility in him when his father tells him bring my shoes he carries nanda maharaj's shoes on his head little krishna no false ego when muchukunda which that episode just took place before this uh, rukmini prasanga so muchukunda he burned kala yavana to ashes and he asks who oh, how did i burn this who burned this person this great demon who burned and krishna says you only burned you have the power to burn you you are gazing at him burned this wicked demon to ashes krishna is not taking any credit actually it was krishna's yukti krishna wanted to wake up his devotee muchukunda who was sleeping for many many centuries but krishna doesn't take any credit for himself he says you when duryodhan he cooked such an opulent feast for krishna offered him so many gifts nice silken clothes precious jewels garland and nice bhoga to eat in hastinapur because he wanted to lure krishna on his side 
Krishna was not attracted. He had the good character to refuse. And Duryodhan said, why are you refusing this offer? Why are you refusing my friendship? Krishna says, I am equal to everyone. I am not rejecting your friendship. But I am not going to eat in your house, in your palace. Why? Krishna says there are only two times, two occasions when a person should eat. All of us should know this. What are the two occasions when we should accept food from others? When we accept, accept gifts of food from others? What are the two occasions? One is, if we are really very hungry, we are starving. And second, if there is love, if there is preeti, there is affection, genuine affection, love and care, then we should accept. And Krishna said to Duryodhan, my dear Duryodhan, neither am I hungry and nor are you having any affection for me. You just want to lure me away from the Pandavas. So I will not accept. And he goes to the house of Vidur and Vidur has gone out somewhere. Hare Krishna. And Vidurari is taking a bath. <laughs> She's taking a bath. And Krishna goes and calls out. Hey Vidur, hey Vidurani. Devaki Nandan has come. I have come. Vidurani gets so happy, so blissful that Krishna has come. She doesn't even realize that she is bathing. Without putting on any clothes, she runs to serve her beloved Krishna. This is the love of a devotee for Krishna. She runs to serve Krishna. In her excitement, she has no external awareness. And Krishna, Sheila, he immediately removes his Pitambar Vastara and puts it around Vidurani. And Vidurani has nothing in the house. <laughs> there is nothing. They are very simple people. She is a Shudrani. Vidur's wife, Vidurani, was a Shudrani. She was born in a Shudra family, a low class family. But there were some bananas. She took the bananas, but in her excitement, she said, I must peel the bananas and give Krishna. She started peeling the bananas and in her excitement, instead of giving the fruit banana, she was throwing the banana in the trash can and she was giving the peel. She was peeling, take this, take this, take this, eat banana, eat banana. She was peeling one banana after the other and giving the peels to Krishna. And Krishna is so bhaktavatsa. He was happily accepting it. Instead of eating delicious, tasty, fresh, hot, ghee cooked bhoga in the palace of Duryodhan, our Krishna, who is Sheila, he was happy to eat banana peels from the hands of a Shudra lady. Why? Because she had devotion. She had good character. This is Krishna's good character, Sheila. Rupa, Krishna's beauty, is so. Um, indescribable. Krishna's beauty is so indescribable that even even um, Lakshmi Devi, she wants to give up the association of Lord Narayan and she wants to come and see Krishna. This is the beauty of Krishna. So Rukmini is, Devi, Rukmini Devi is saying, what is my fault if I am helplessly attracted to you? Even Lakshmi Devi in Vaikuntha is attracted to you by your beauty. You are so beautiful. There is a very beautiful ashtakam called Nanda Nanda Ashtakam. It describes the beauty of Krishna. I like it very much. You can maybe read it. It's very beautiful. It describes, it's simply describing the beauty of Krishna. Sucharu Vakra Mandalam Surat Sukarna Ratna Kundalam Suchara Chitanga Chandanam Namami Nanda Nandanam Sucharu Vakra Mandalam. Your Vakra Mandal, your face is very beautiful. Sucharu, very beautiful. Charu means beautiful. Very beautiful. You have Bhakti Charu Swami Maharaj. The beauty of Bhakti. Bhakti Charu. So Sucharu Vakra Mandalam. Your Vakra Mandal, your face is very beautiful. Sucharu Vakra Mandalam. Sur Karana Ratna Kundalam. Sukarana. Your ears are very beautiful. Not Karana, but they are Sukarana. They are very beautiful. Very beautiful, shapely ears Krishna has. Beautiful ears. Sukarana. And how are your ears? Ratna Kundalam. They have beautiful earrings. 
सुचारु वक्त्र मंडलम सुरत्सुकरण रत्न कुंडलम सुचरचितांग चंदनम एंड योर बॉडी इज डेकोरेटेड विथ चंदन अंग चंदन सुचारचितांग चंदनम नमामि नंदनंदनम आई ऑफर माय ओबिजेंस टू नंदनंदन कृष्ण श्याम सुंदर सुदीर्घ नेत्र पंकजम योर आईज आर वेरी ब्यूटीफुल एंड लार्ज Kundarika Vishal Aksho. They are big eyes and they are Kundarik. They are, um, they are like Pankaj, like a beautiful lotus, lotus flower, lotus petals. <clears throat> In this way, the beauty of Nandan and then Krishna is described. We don't have time to describe the full Ashtakam, but very beautiful. So the root of Krishna is described. Very beautiful. No one can compare to Krishna in beauty. and vidya next point is vidya second line first word vidya krishna's knowledge just a conversation with his friend arjun on the battlefield of kurukshetra in one hour krishna spoke few verses and that has become bhagavad gita <laughs> which is the highest uh, book of philosophy for uh, centuries centuries and centuries and all the sampradayas including shripad shankaracharya They have commented on the Bhagavad Gita. It is such an important book. Just a conversation. Imagine how many of us can say that I had a conversation with a friend. My friend was feeling little low, and I gave him a little pep talk. And well, that pep talk has become uh, the the book of religion. And in the courts of law, people put their hand and swear by the <laughs> by the conversation I had with my friend once. And then Krishna had another conversation with Uddhav. in the 11th canto of shrimad bhagavatam and that becomes uddhav gita this is the knowledge of krishna this is the power of krishna's knowledge vidya vayo and he is always youthful even in the battlefield of kurukshetra he was 100 years old he had grandchildren at that time but he was youthful like a 16 year old boy not just in appearance but even in his energy to ride a chariot All day long, and Bhishma and Dronacharya and Karana are shooting arrows, and you have to dodge those arrows with your chariot. Not just save yourself, but save the uh, save Arjun also. Partha Sarathi, Krishna is Partha Sarathi, and you have to save Partha also. That is the duty of the Sarathi. So very Krishna is very youthful always, and uh, Dravina, his property, all the fourteen planetary systems belong to Krishna. अहम सर्वस्य प्रभव मत सर्व प्रवर्त भजते मां भूल भाव सामता अहम ही सर्व यज्ञा भोक्ता च प्रभु नभिजानी तत्वी ते सो एवरीथिंग बिलॉंग्स टू कृष्ण द्रविण एंड धाम इज इन्फ्लुएंस कृष्ण इज सो इन्फ्लुएंशियल सो इन्फ्लुएंशियल when his uh, guru sandipani muni requested please bring my dead son back krishna had the influence to go to yamlok and order yamraj to bring the dead sons back he he could go to varun dev and rescue his father nanda maharaj he could bring back the six dead sons of devaki so this is the influence of krishna This is the influence of Krishna to save the life of his friend Arjun. He could go all the way to Mahavishnu in Vaikuntha. So Krishna is most influential. Atma tulyam. Krishna is asam or dhva. No one is equal to Krishna and no one is greater than him. Asam or dhva. Asama means no one is equal to him and urdhva means no one is higher than him. So Krishna is called asam or dhva. No one is equal to him. No one is higher than him. Which means Krishna is the highest. Everyone is lower than him. Ekela Ishwara Krishna Ara Sara Bhritya. The Viraj Goswami says, Krishna is the only God, and everyone else is Krishna's servant. This is Krishna. So, Rukmini Devi is writing in this verse that, my dear Krishna, you are the abode of all good qualities. Then, how am I to blame if I am helplessly, madly attracted to you? and i have given my heart to you and you are manobhi ramam in the previous verse he is nayana bhi ramam he is giving all satisfaction to the eyes his beauty and here he is manobhi ramam 
he gives satisfaction and pleasure to the mind to the mind krishna is so beautiful he has got such uh, wonderful characteristics such beautiful uh, nature krishna has when muchubunda asked him who are you krishna said i am vasudev i am the son of vasudev maharaj he gave all credit to his father <laughs> so like that krishna is very sweet very humble very wonderful and just like rukmini we should also give our heart to krishna and we can do that if we hear acharya vani if we hear from the acharyas and the beautiful letter is there there are i think seven verses uh, we have run out of time but the brahman read these prayers of rukmini to lord krishna and rukmini devi there she prays to krishna that krishna please come and in the rakshas style where you abduct me please marry me because i have given my heart to you i have accepted you as my husband you are my husband birth after birth i cannot even think of getting married to shishupal so just imagine shishupal from his birth was envious of krishna when shishupal was born he had three eyes hare krishna shishupal had three eyes and he had four arms <laughs> and children cry when they are born but shishupal was not crying when he was born he was braying like a donkey loudly everyone had to close their ears it was so unpleasant and then there was akashwani there was a message from higher up that anyone who takes shishupal on their lap and shishupal's third eye disappears and he has four arms two of the arms disappear that person will kill shishupal now damaghosh and his wife shishupal's mother mother and father they were very anxious to know who is going to kill who is going to kill our son now shishupal's mother is the sister of maharaj vasudev so he was shishupal was krishna's um, paternal first cousin very close relative so naturally everyone who came to meet uh, maharaj dava ghosh the king of chedi to see that he has got a nice son who has taken birth and they would keep shishupal baby shishupal in everyone's lap to see what happens can we find out who is going to be the killer and of course krishna balram also they went to meet shishupal as cousins and as soon as shishupal was placed in krishna's lap one of his three eyes disappeared and two of his arms disappeared and he stopped braying like a donkey <laughs> so at that time the parents immediately understood that krishna devakinandan krishna is going to be the killer of our son so they requested they requested krishna that please promise us you will not kill our son he is your cousin brother please please promise us promise us promise us. krishna said my dear aunt i promise you i will not kill shishupal and i will forgive up to 100 offenses at one given time in one assembly at one given time he can offend me 100 times i will forgive him i will not kill him but if he commits more than 100 offenses continuously at one go then i am not responsible krishna made the promise and from that day on shishupal he was so envious of krishna that how children they learn to speak mama baba first words monosyllables shishupal first words were blasphemy against krishna all his life shishupal had been criticizing krishna blaspheming krishna and he was very intelligent he was very handsome he was very powerful he was a strong kshatriya but he was very intelligent also he would always offend krishna 99 times he would keep a count and then he would stop <laughs> and he would stop and again he would go he would tease krishna 99 times he would tease krishna and criticize krishna and insult krishna and he would stop <laughs> so he was like that day and night he used to criticize krishna because he was envious of krishna now imagine the plight of rukmini devi my dear friends rukmini devi loves krishna with all her heart and soul and shishupal hates detests and envies krishna with all his heart and soul 
And Rukmini's fate is that she has to marry Shishupal. Imagine what will happen to Rukmini Devi. Day and night, she will have to hear blasphemy, criticism of Krishna, the one who she loves the most. Just see the irony of the situation. So she's writing out of desperation a letter. Please come. Shishupal should not even touch me. I belong to you. Please come and take me. And when Krishna reads the letter, read out by the Brahman, he smiles and he says, please tell Rukmini Devi that just like she's always thinking of me, I am always thinking of her. Just like she heard about me from the sadhus, those sadhus visit Dwarka Puri also. Narad Muni and all, they keep coming to Dwarka. And from them, I have heard about Rukmini Devi. They told me that in Vidharva, uh, Bhishmak Maharaj has given birth to a very beautiful, um, very beautiful girl. Her name is Rukmini. She is the abode of all good qualities. Hearing of her good qualities, I am also attracted to Rukmini. In fact, my dear Brahman, I cannot even sleep at night. I am always thinking of Rukmini. So my dear friends, what is the lesson here? Balramji represents Adi Guru Tattva, who gave strength to the Bhajana Kriya in the form of the Brahman to reach Krishna. Krishna represents Bhagwan. Krishna represents our uh, Sadhya Bhagwan, the focus of our Sadhana. We may not know, Rukmini did not know that Krishna is having sleepless nights thinking about her. Rukmini did not know that Krishna also loves her. Rukmini did not know that Krishna also has heard about her. Krishna had heard about Rukmini and he had noticed and he had also decided I will marry Rukmini. Just see. So we may feel that we have no hope. We are in this world just struggling, doing our sadhana. We should take hope. By the mercy of Guru, by the mercy of the sadhus, Krishna knows what we are doing. Krishna knows about our struggles. Krishna knows about our sincerity and our insincerity. Hare Krishna. So we have to be sincere. If we are sincere, we can be reassured from this Leela that Krishna has also heard about us. And Krishna also has made up his mind that I am going to pick up this Jiva from the Samsara Sagar. I will pick up this Jiva. Mamottama shloka janeshu sakhyam samsara chakra brahmatasva karma bhi our Nath will take us back home, back to God. If we are sincere, like Rukmini Devi. And Krishna says to his charioteer, Daruk, come on, get the chariot ready with the four horses. And he takes, he keeps the Brahman on the chariot. He himself gets on the chariot and overnight, from Dwarka, he reaches Kondanya Puri in Vidharva. And you all know the rest of the story. You can read it in Srimad Bhagavatam. But Krishna abducts Rukmini Devi, answering her prayer. It's a beautiful long story. Impossible to narrate it in one class. So much de so many details are there. What happens in Kondanya Puri and how Krishna uh, rescues Lakshmini Devi, uh, Rukmini Devi and uh, later on marries her in Dwarka Puri. So in this way, Rukmini Mangal took place. The marriage of Rukmini took place to Lord Krishna. Rukmini represents all of us, the sadhakas, and Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. At the time of our greatest need, the marriage was the greatest need, the hour of greatest need for Rukmini, where she was most vulnerable, about to get married to Rukmini. Similarly, at time of death, when we are about to go to hell of Shishupal, Krishna will rescue us if we are sincere. If our prayers reach him and our prayers will reach him by the mercy of our Guru Maharaj, our Guru Varga, if we are sincere. That Brahman was very sincere. The Bhagavatam describes the Brahman was a very sincere, reliable Brahman. Therefore, he could reach Krishna. So we have to be sincere and we have to be hopeful. We have to be hopeful. We have to be positive. There is always hope in Krishna consciousness. Success is guaranteed. All we have to do is just be sincere. Chant our rounds, at least 16 rounds, sincerely. Very, very good quality. 
and for the rest of the day we should keep chanting the hare krishna mahamantra or at least if the full mahamantra is too much while doing other activities hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 hare hare if that is too much we can just chant krishna 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 radha 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 radha, radha, radha. like that krishna naam radha naam we can keep chanting because in kali yuga nothing else works except the holy name hare naam hare naam hare naam eva kevalam kala nasti eva nasti eva nasti eva gati ram so in this way we should continue with enthusiasm utsaha nischaya bhay and then success is guaranteed rukmini devi is teaching us krishna will take us in the end in spiritual life it is always a happy ending only in spiritual life and they lived happily ever after it is possible only in spiritual life not in material life because material life is anityam asukham lokam it is temporary and miserable even if we think it is not miserable we are comfortable we are millionaires we have no financial worries health is good wealth is good everything is good still it is temporary still it is temporary who can say that it is permanent therefore happily they lived happily ever after is only in spiritual life so with this my dear friends i will stop jagat guru shila prabhupad ki jai shrimati rukmini devi ki jai भगवान श्री कृष्ण चंद्र की जय निताय गौर प्रेमान हरि हरि बोल थैंक यू वेरी मच हरे कृष्ण इफ देर आर एनी क्वेश्चंस वी कैन टेक कमेंट्स हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण प्रभु नरे क्वेश्चन विद जस्ट टू सी टू से दैट हाउ रुक्मिणी हैज फेथ इन द वर्ड ऑफ नरद मुनि शी हैज नेवर सीन कृष्ण बट she had full faith in the word of narad muni representing guru as how she get krishna was hari hari yes thank you thank you prabhu very nice point yes so kasturi manjari mata ji has raised her hand and devahuti mata ji so one by one you can go you're not able to you're able to unmute no you can unmute Yes, Prabhu Ji. Then my friend, I'm Prabhu Ji. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for this beautiful, beautiful uh, so katha and the the lessons that we can take from from this, Prabhu. I have two questions. One is, Prabhu, like you mentioned about the dissatisfaction part, like we should not be dissatisfied. We should always think that they no come from susmikshmano. so but sometimes there is dissatisfaction of not being able to complete our quota meaning we want to do more in devotional services but whatever the capacity you try to use it to the full extent but still the to do list is still not done so then there is a sense of dissatisfaction so what do you do that that dissatisfaction is good that dissatisfaction is good the dissatisfaction that krishna says to the brahman is this satisfaction for material things i want mm-hmm. more sense gratification i want more material things that hankering that trishna mm-hmm. that thirst for material sense gratification is not good krishna says is that okay yes prabhu ji thank you so much prabhu and uh, then this uh, you know because it's very tricky also right prabhu that there could be some portion of it right which is related to the subtle desires which may not look like material desire but there are subtle desires in the name of krishna consciousness so we want to do more but there is something subtle behind it like getting some owner respect or acknowledgement or something like that so that also many times is a cause of dissatisfaction so that how to deal with that part of it prabhu yeah that uh, desire for um, appreciation gratification that is unhealthy that comes under uh, kanaka kamini kirti these three things kanaka is gold wealth kamini is uh, sense gratification and uh, kirti is appreciation glorification distinction praise so that is very detrimental to krishna consciousness and that should be given up A devotee should become so sensitive that even these subtle, unhealthy desires no longer remain subtle for us. They remain; they become gross for us. So we should we should be very mindful of these subtle, so-called subtle um, 
desires for sense gratification they should become gross for us should give them that is not favorable for krishna consciousness anya abhilashita shunyam jnana karma jnana no other desire mahaprabhu says na dhanam na janam na janam means no followers i don't want any followers sundarim and kavitam va jagadish kam oh jagadish it is not my desire to be known as a kavi as a very learned person or very scholarly person all these are desire to have all these things is completely against getting krishna if we practice krishna consciousness wanting these side benefits then we will get these benefits we will get prestige we will get appreciation we will get claps we will get likes we will get hearts but we will not get krishna so we have to choose do we want recognition and appreciation in this material world or do we want krishna therefore therefore uh, gopal bhatta goswami requested shri krishna das kaviraj goswami don't write about me in chaitanya charitamrita i give you all blessings to write but don't mention about me hare krishna is that okay yes prabhu thank you so much and prabhu my second question is about when you mentioned uh, rukmini represents a sadhaka and shishupal dantvakara and all they represent the anarthas and we uh, gri- pride anger greed and all those kind of things so and then you mentioned that when all these anarthas bother us then we take shelter of krishna instead of uh, that rukmini wrote the letter which is like sadhana um and um and the brahmana to through whom she sent the letter is our bhajan kriya so many times it feels like there is a big test goes on when these anarthas face <laughs> face up and even though we one may try to take shelter of hearing chanting and other devotional processes but sometimes it's like it just makes us so crazy that i mean we try to take shelter but it becomes a little difficult to focus on something so then what do you do prabhu this mind is going to trouble us as long as it is not controlled and it does it to everyone throughout the history of mankind we see this uh, kala krishna das he was with sri chaitanya mahaprabhu he had witnessed mahaprabhu four months past times in the house of venkat bhatta he saw how vasudev the leper was delivered he saw mahaprabhu's dancing kirtan his past times with purma brahman all those past times kala krishna das witnessed and still he got attracted by kanaka kamini kirti tribals bhatta haris tempted him he was mind was bewildered intelligence was gone ध्यातो विषयम पुंस संगास्तेषु पजायते संगा संजायते काम कामात क्रोध भी जायते क्रोधा भवति सम्मोह सम्मोहन स्मृति विभ्रम स्मृति भ्रमशात बुद्धि नाशो बुद्धि नाशात प्रणश्च होल सीक्वेंस ऑफ फॉल डाउन इज डिस्क्राइब्ड बाय कृष्ण इन भगवत गीता ऑल बिगिंस विद मेडिटेटिंग ऑन द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स एंड हु मेडिटेट्स द माइंड ध्यातो ध्यान कौन करता है माइंड माइंड डज ध्यान ध्यातो विषयम फोकसिंग ऑन द सेंस ऑब्जेक्ट्स i remember when i was in my residency training mass um, i wanted to buy a car when i became an attending so now how to buy a car naturally you do some research so i started looking at reviews which car should i buy you know like that it should not be very expensive it should be reliable it should have you know decent safety features good fuel economy so many things i was there and i was looking at comparing different cars but by looking at so many reviews i became so absorbed in that that day and night i was thinking every time i was to drive drive on the road i see car i would look at the car oh, this car how is this car let me go and check out the review for this car so we become just by meditating on a particular thing we become, become mind becomes completely engrossed and i remember when i became attending the first friday i got my salary i went to a car dealership to buy a car because i was completely absorbed in that consciousness Because later on I realized it was very bad, not good. So the higher to wish I am too. So yes, you are right. Mind can make us completely bewildered, and that is true for everyone, not just you, for everyone. 
our mind is our greatest enemy therefore we have to understand that we are not the mind the mind treat the mind like someone else like a bad dog just barking 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 if you feed the dog thinking the dog will become quiet that is like giving in to the temptations of the mind giving in to the dictations of the mind giving in to the temptations that the mind presents just do it once you will be fine that is like feeding that barking bad dog yeah while the dog is eating there is no barking but as soon as the eating is over now with renewed energy the dog will bark even more we have to starve that dog to death just don't listen to the crazy mind we have to treat the mind. so when any negative emotion comes envy comes we should smile i am not envious the mind is envious and i am not the mind i am jivara swarup hai krishna ra nitya das i am krishna gopi bhartur pada kamala yara das das anudas i am krishna servant i am servant of my guru mahat i am not i am not envious it is that mind that is envious i am not lusty i am not angry i am not greedy because all these negative emotions are in the mind and we are not the mind so we should not listen to the mind we will listen to the mind when the mind tells us wake up early for brahma murta japa ah now you are talking now you are my friend <laughs> now i will entertain you but until the mind becomes a friend we will not listen to the mind we will listen to the intelligence and intelligence comes from bhagavata from chaitanya charitamrita from bhagavad gita from guru sadhu shastra so we should only and only listen to guru sadhu and shastra and our devotee friends who listen to guru sadhu and shastra that is called intelligence our spiritual intelligence comes from guru sadhu and shastra so we should only listen to guru sadhu and shastra and our intelligence should become um, strong by listening to guru sadhu and shastra so when we have to make a decision we don't make a decision from the mind we make a decision based on intelligence spiritual intelligence guru sadhu and shastra what would my guru maharaj want me to do in this situation what will make my guru maharaj happy what will please shila prabhupad in this situation and we should act accordingly not listening to the mind mind will say anything anything i have heard devotees tell me such such crazy things the mind can present to present to them like uh, sometimes doing little cheating with money even with devotees whether it comes to you know book distribution or booking their tickets for yatras you know some little cut it's okay prabhu this is you know things like that sometimes becoming envious sometimes having you know uh, illicit feelings towards devotees it's very very bad so mind is very crazy we should not identify ourselves what happens mata ji the problem is now so i'm sitting and envy comes or greed comes or lust comes and i suddenly feel ah, so difficult this envy i am so overwhelmed by envy i am so overwhelmed with lust i am so overwhelmed with anger as soon as we think like this we are defeated why because i have i have identified with the mind i am lusty i am envious i am angry i am greedy immediately we have identified with the mind i am the mind no we are not we are pure souls the mind is like that but mind is temporary when we go to spiritual world the mind will be left behind so we must listen to our spiritual intelligence and when the mind aligns with the spiritual intelligence of guru sadhu shastra then we we will entertain the mind so therefore we should give mana shiksha shiksha means we should teach the mind we should teach the bad dog you are a fool you will stay there i will keep starving you you stay you bark however much you bark i am not going to listen to you you will tell me do this do that i am not going to so i am going to completely neglect you i am not you you are not mine i am krishna's you are also krishna's you align with krishna's plan then you are my friend then you are my mind until then you are a bad dog your rabbit dog i will cage you if you remain inside i will not feed you i will starve you to death mana shiksha that is the meaning of man, that is the meaning of sarasvati thakur saying morning 100 times cane the mind and at night with a chappal hit the mind another 100 times so we should completely not identify with the uncontrolled mind mind will say anything mata ji mind will say anything we don't we don't care about it we just listen to guru sadhu and shastra we look where the example is right we look where the teachings are right we don't look at the mind like that 
Is that okay? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you so much, Prabhu. I'm very, very grateful to you, Prabhu. And I seek your prayers and best wishes to be able to apply this because this is so important. And always remember this example of Rukmini Devi and not identifying with the mind and the anarthas. Thank you so much, Prabhu. We are, we are Krishnas. We are Prabhupads. Prabhupads and taking the positive identity of servant of servant of servant. Yes. Diksha kale bhakta kare atma samarpan sehi kale prabhu kare tare atma samarpan. In Chaitanya Charitamrit Mahaprabhu says to Sanatan Goswami. Diksha kale bhakta kare atma samarpan. When we take diksha or when we take shelter, bhakta kare atma samarpan. Atma samarpan, we have already offered ourselves to Guru. So who are we? We are not the mind. Yes. We are not lusty. We are not envious. We are not angry. No. We belong to Guru. Mm-hmm. We are Guru, Guru's puppets. Oh, hey, Vaishnava Thakur, I am your kukur. Oh, Vaishnava Thakur, I am your dog. I am your monkey. I will dance the way you are my master. The way you want me to jump, I will jump. Prabhupada said puppet. We are Krishna's puppets. We do what Krishna says. You do what Guru and Krishna say. We are their puppets. That's who we are. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Dhanwad Pranam. This Kanti Mala, this is our dog belt. Dog. <laughs> we yeah. belong to Guru. Yeah. We don't belong to the mind. We don't listen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So now we have uh, Devahuti Mataji and then Janeshwar Gaurang Prabhu. Then we'll stop. Hare Krishna. Devahuti Mataji, please go ahead. Hare. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanva Pranam. Thank you so much Prabhuji, the class was so beautiful. Uh, Prabhuji, my question is like, that like uh, in our daily life, like Krishna should be the center. Whatever uh, whatever activities or bhaktis we do, he, we sh- our motive should be please Krishna. Okay, now like in the daily practical life, you see, okay, like, okay, start about like listening kathas or somebody, okay, I don't like this Prabhuji's katha, I will listen this Prabhuji's katha or okay, I will sing this this version to Krishna because I like this version and again like in the seva too okay I don't like to make the garland I will I will make the prasadam okay so in the prasadam too okay I like this so I will make this and then offer to so in each and every right now in my stage like each and everything comes like first of all my choice and then then like Krishna's choice so like am I satisfying Krishna in this way because this is like I feel like that I'm satisfying my my own personal thing so like is it like krishna will be pleased with that because uh, i don't know so can you please prabhu say something so actually ishwara sarva bhutanam rida deshe arjuna tishtha the supreme personality of god at krishna is in everyone's heart and sarvasya chaham ridi sanni vishto mataha smritir gyanam apohanam cha vedasya sarvair aham eva vedyo vedanta krit vedavi devacha that sarvasya cha aham ridi sanni vishtu. Krishna says, I am in everyone's heart. And from me comes remembrance. From me comes memory and from me comes forgetfulness. So if we are wanting to do something and we have a sincere sadhana, we are chanting our rounds nicely, it is possible that Krishna is inspiring us to cook that particular thing or to play that particular kirtan or to hear the particular harikatha. As long as we are sincere in our sadhana. Because Krishna consciousness is a very personal process, Mataji. The way Tunga Vidya Sakhi serves Radha and Krishna, the way Lalita Sakhi serves Radha and Krishna, Vishaka Sakhi serves Radha and Krishna, Sudevi, all the Ashta Sakhis, how they serve, they all have a unique way. No, but no two Sakhis have the same service. They have different services and they perform these services in their own unique different ways. So everyone is different, everyone has a different bhav, different way of rendering service to Krishna. And Krishna likes that flavor. Krishna likes that variety. So you are individual. Janeshwar Gaurang Prabhu is individual. Kasturi Manjari Mataji, Ishwar Radha Mataji, Sharang Prabhu. We are all individuals. And we have our own individual relationship with Krishna. And Krishna loves the flavor of that individual special relationship. So we should be sincere. We should do our bhajan nicely. And whatever Krishna inspires us, we can do that. Of course, we should not be... Uh, what we are doing should be in line with Guru Sadhana and Shastra. For example, I should not say that today my government, I want to wear a cowboy hat and I will dress them like cowboys with pistols and revolvers around their belt. No, that is not good. That is not good. So, because that is not in line with Guru Sadhu and Shastra. That is not. So we can do, but our free will should be within the boundary 
of guru sadhu and shastra is that okay but yes we can follow that inspiration that we feel and uh, we should serve krishna like that spontaneously yes hare krishna thank you so last question janeshwar gaurang prabhu hare krishna prabhu ji please accept me dhanyawad thank you so much for this janeshwar gaurang Wonderful, wonderful class. So many things for me to learn, especially about this mind. You had given me instructions before. It's become a refresher course again today. Uh, oh, one thing uh, regarding the mind. It seems like, at least I can say for myself, whenever I want to do, whenever you want to do something spiritual, a lot of times the mind says, then it starts giving all this antagonism. You know, it starts presenting a lot of other nonsense. You know. But as soon as you stop doing spiritual stuff, the mind becomes quiet. Now I I don't understand that how that happens. You know, it's like and uh, also you know we have always said you should keep uh, try to do as much as in Krishna consciousness, which I can understand. But if my level is not not that high, then it sometimes it becomes overwhelming. Then it becomes quote unquote sometimes becomes burdensome burdensome. So how do you address that? Yeah, we should associate with devotees who are enthusiastic. Who are positive and who encourage us. If we keep that association, then we will not feel overburdened. We will not uh, undergo spiritual fatigue or um, the burden that you are describing, overwhelming. That will not happen if we have like-minded association, sajatiya sangha. If we are with uh, devotees who are utsahan nischaya bhairya, who have determination, who have patience, and who are enthusiastic if we have such sajatiya sangha and we follow in their footsteps we remain in their association then uh, we will not get overwhelmed or feel spiritual uh, burden okay, the process is kevala ananda kanda shri narottam das thakur says it's pleasurable susukham kartum avyayam krishna says in bhagavad gita this process of krishna consciousness is susukham kartum avyayam it is very uh, very very happy process pleasing process now sometimes the mind says don't do and you said if we don't do we listen to the mind then the mind becomes peaceful is that what you said correct yeah sometimes right like sometimes yeah. when you so anything that is exact... spiritual ha huh? sometimes like you say when you do spiritual thing then the it's the man it becomes the the mind starts doing all yeah huh. mind revolts and the mind says do something else something non spiritual and then when we do that then the mind becomes quiet for the time being because the mind has got what it wants we just lost the battle that's why the mind is becoming quiet it has won it has won the battle but shila bhakti tirtha swami maharaj says we are spiritual warriors we should not be defeated by the mind we should not be defeated by these negative thoughts we should fight and even if we lose a small battle we should get up what does a soldier do when the soldier is grazed by a bullet the soldier runs ah oh, they hit me He got me there. Now I cannot do anything. No, soldier gets up, sees what was the problem, why I got shot. Maybe I was not alert enough. And now I will shoot. And what happens when a soldier gets hurt on the battlefield? What do the fellow soldiers do? Leave no man behind. They come and they help the soldier get up and they give coverage to the uh, soldier so that they can uh, kill the enemy and not lose any of their men. So that is exactly our position. We are spiritual warriors. Shri Bhakti Tirath Maharaj wrote a book, Spiritual Warrior, series of books. And so we are spiritual warriors, and we have to fight. So the mind becomes quiet when we listen to the mind because the mind just won. The mind just got what it wants. Maya just won the battle. So we should not. That is just mind is becoming quiet temporarily, but mind has just become stronger with the victory, and the mind will come back with greater vengeance. So we should never give in to the mind, but at the same time, you are right. Sometimes, you know, if we we all are at a certain level, and we cannot pretend to be premature paramhamsas because we are not paramhamsas. We are sadhakas. That's why we use the word sadhaka. We are sadhakas. We are practicing. But the practice of Krishna consciousness had should has to be with intensity, because we are not eighteen years old now. We are old, and uh, we have very limited time. and this birth is so special because in this birth we have found our connection with shila prabhupada we have found a sadguru in this life 
we have got prabhupad's books we have got guru maharaj we have got the full parampara with us we have got a assembly of devotees we have got our japamala we have got our gopal ji we have got our gauranita deities we have got a krishna conscious spouse we have got krishna conscious children we have got all material facilities so in this life we are well situated next life we don't know what will happen so we have to make it in this life only which means we have to become 100% krishna conscious we have to remove everything from our life our aim should be to just save enough to live a simple life after retirement in old age finish our duties and just aim for 64 rounds 80 rounds 96 rounds hari katha day and night reading prabhupad's books day and night associating with devotees day and night preaching day and night serving the movement day and night we have to become 100% krishna conscious that should be the planning that should be the aim just like uh, to come to america it requires planning i will go on this visa then i will give that exam then i will get a job then i will work sincerely then i will apply for a, a green card then i will get citizenship it's a process it requires planning and hard work so if our aim is to be with krishna like rukmini wanted if we want krishna to take us then we have to try to make ourselves qualified of course we can never become qualified to get radha and krishna because they are so pure so beautiful so wonderful but at least we should try our best so aim of life is not to listen to the mind aim of life is to become completely krishna conscious and we have to make our planning accordingly i am going to do this then i am going to do, i am going to get second initiation i am going to do bhakti shastri second initiation i am going to increase my rounds i am going to read these books i am going to hear hari katha we have to find few devotees whose hari katha really touches our heart and inspires us in addition to shila prabhupad's lecture shila prabhupad's books and we should develop a attraction for that and we should spend all our time doing that hearing hari katha reading associating with devotees and doing some service like preaching book distribution helping other devotees and chanting more rounds more and more rounds and try to improve the quality of our sadhana because quantity there is a limitation maximum we can chant 16 rounds 64 rounds 128 rounds 192 rounds 200 rounds 250 rounds but there is a limit we cannot go beyond that there are only 24 hours in a day and we have to sleep at least for few hours every day so the quantity of bhajan there is a limitation there is a cap but the quality of bhajan there is no cap there is no limit we may chant 32 rounds now what is the quality of those 32 rounds that has got no limits we can go deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper in our chanting so we should plan i want to improve the quality of my chanting now to improve the quality of chanting we have to improve our entire day we have to improve our attitude our behavior our devotee relationships because all these things affect our japa japa is not just two hours what we do in the remaining 22 hours affects our consciousness in those two hours if we have served devotees we have love and affection for devotees we try to help devotees encourage them and we sit down to chant i guarantee it krishna will give such amazing reciprocation during that japa japa will be so smooth so deep krishna will reciprocate with us so we have to mold our lives like this how we can become 100% krishna conscious krishna i want to become 100% yours manasa deha geha jo kichu mor arpilu tu apade nanda kisho that is the aim of life shila bhakti vinod thakur says aim of life is to become pure devotees completely krishna conscious and we should plan now how to get there we are here and we want to get here how to go there take help of devotees you are from india in india have you seen growing up that people are riding their cycle bicycle and if they want to go fast they hold on to a truck or they hold on to a car or a jeep and zzz, now they are going at the speed of the motor vehicle even though they are a little teeny mini bicycle have you seen that we should not do that that is dangerous but that example is there if you if we are on a bicycle sh- sh- going slowly at 7 miles an hour but we want to go at 40 miles an hour then we hold on to a motorcyclist or we hold on to a jeep and zzz, we start going fast so if we want to go ahead in krishna consciousness we have to hold on to devotees who inspire us 
you have to hold on to devotees who are going at greater speed if you hold on to them then our speed will increase even though we are on bicycle so we have to find such devotees who inspire us who encourage us not discourage us who inspire and encourage us and we should hold on to them they are my best friends and our spiritual life will take off and before we know it we are in the spiritual world hari <laughs> bol because we have held on to those great devotees so hold on to these great devotees bro and then there is uh, not burden but the burden is reduced burden was to bicycle on our own strength my thighs are hurting i'm bicycling on my own strength but you hold on to these devotees then the burden is taken away they are pulling and we are going so like that is that okay janesh karan bro yes prabhu thank you so much that's so awesome. hare krishna give me your blessings yeah. hare krishna prabhu one comment on what you said yes please we should we should plan to get our citizenship to goloka vrindavan hari hari <laughs> yes 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 oh krishna hare krishna thank you thank you dear sarang prabhu so we'll stop here ford lauderdel devotees ki jai jagat guru shila prabhu pad ki jai प्रभु की जय 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 जय